Hello, everyone. Welcome to this Inside the Americas. Here's a look at what's coming up in today's show. Still no sign of the Argentine submarine that went missing two weeks ago, and yet a dozen countries are still desperately trying to find where it went. The tiny nation of El Salvador is revolutionizing its agriculture, waging a war on pesticides and seeds sold by large corporations. And you'll meet the hairless Mexican dog with the unpronounceable name that's the star of the new Disney Pixar movie, Coco. Well, we'll start first with the latest on that Argentine submarine that went off the radar two weeks ago. 44 crew members were on board the sub that only had enough oxygen to last up to 10 days. More than a dozen countries are searching for that missing sub now. And while experts are convinced they will find it, family and friends are starting to lose hope. Nearly two weeks after its disappearance, details of the ARA San Juan's final message were made public by the Argentinian Navy. Water entered through the snorkel as they were charging the batteries, creating a short circuit and starting a fire. They had to isolate the battery, and they continued to sail underwater with another battery circuit in the direction of Mar del Plata. The incident is consistent with reports of a recorded explosion around the time contact with the vessel was lost on November 15th. Since then, over a dozen countries have been conducting a massive search of the area, but there are still no signs of the submarine or of any of its 44 crew members. With the vessel only having enough oxygen to last 10 days underwater, families and relatives have begun to lose hope. Yet experts remain adamant that the ship will be found. I'm confident that the submarine is structurally intact, but it must have suffered damage significant enough to destroy its ability to communicate and maintain surface level. The ARA San Juan was commissioned in 1985 and was refitted in 2014. Argentinian President Mauricio Macri has promised to launch an investigation into the age and condition of the vessel. Let's take a look now at the big news stories out of the United States this week. And a Libyan militant was convicted of terrorism charges stemming from the attack that killed the U.S. ambassador in Benghazi in 2012. But crucially, Ahmed Abu Katala was found not guilty of the most serious charge against him, murder. That attack became instant political fodder with much criticism of then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's handling of the conflict, a controversy that dogged her during her presidential campaign. The White House is now facing what could be a crippling government shutdown after a huge blow up between Donald Trump and top Democrats over a spending bill for next year. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi and top Senate Democrat Chuck Schumer pulled out of a planned White House budget meeting with Trump just hours after the president sent a tweet attacking them as weak on illegal immigration and bent on raising taxes. Trump went on to hold the talks with two empty chairs to replace them. Pressure is now on Congress to come up with a compromise on federal spending or face a government shutdown when the deadline hits December 8th. And another American celebrity has been brought down by harassment allegations. Matt Lauer, the journalist and longtime host of the popular Today Show, was fired for inappropriate sexual behavior. Lauer's co-anchor, Savannah Guthrie, made that announcement at the top of the show Wednesday on U.S. network NBC. The move coming a week after CBS News fired its morning anchor, Charlie Rose, amid reports of sexual misconduct. This week, the European Union voted to extend a license for the controversial weed killer glyphosate, a pesticide that critics say causes cancer. But in Central America, the tiny nation of El Salvador has banned a series of pesticides. It's part of the country's many moves to revolutionize the way it farms. Beneath these sprawling green hills and volcanic landscapes, a revolution is unfolding in El Salvador. The smallest country in Central America has waged war on pesticides and seeds sold by large corporations. Beans, lentils, rice and corn, all are being grown locally and organically without any chemicals. A sense of pride emanates from these farmers 
as they gather their latest harvest. Look, they're much bigger than those we bought from Monsanto. Monsanto, a name that's become ominous in El Salvador. For me, Monsanto represents death. It's a bunch of chemical products that end up making us sick. The small nation has begun to challenge agro-industrial giants like Monsanto. After fighting the military junta for 12 years, these former rebels are now in power. But they're engaged in a new struggle, the fight against pesticides. We're going to add mineral salts and some manganese. A traditional recipe long forgotten by these farmers. It's true that these methods are quite basic, but they'd forgotten them because they didn't need them with Monsanto. El Salvador recently banned over 50 types of pesticides, including all those sold by Monsanto. Manuel Abalinga says his livelihood has been impacted by the change, but that he's willing to make sacrifices. We make less money, it's true, but we don't feel at a loss. We would have more yields with chemicals. But we hope that one day what we do here will be recognized. One thing El Salvador didn't ban is foreign seeds. But it strongly encourages its citizens to use local products. Adrian Pineda gets these seeds from the states, free of charge. A pink dye protects them from insects. No pesticides are needed. These are okay for our personal consumption, but they're not profitable. Like Adrian, many farmers are reluctant to fully make the switch and continue to plant Monsanto. The small one is from the government and the big one, Monsanto. Monsanto seeds cost $150 a bag, but the yields are more reliable and more lucrative. If I had enough money, I'd just buy this strand. It's heavier, it can be sold for more money. According to Adrian, government corn brings in 50% less profit. But for the former guerrilleros, the fight continues to convince the country's farmers to make the switch. We're used to struggle here. We already fought a war. Now it's a new one. Standing up to giants like Monsanto, tiny El Salvador continues to dream of a fully organic and self-sufficient agriculture. It's time now for our picture of the week, and this dog is Dante, one of the stars of the new Disney Pixar movie, Coco. That movie pays tribute to Mexican culture with its vibrant music and Day of the Dead festivities. It also celebrates the country's national dog, those hairless wonders known as the Cholos. Well, their real name is actually a lot more complicated than that, but I'll let our correspondents in Mexico give it away. <laughs> Which one's the statue and which one's the dog? We're in the Dolores Olmedo Museum Gardens in Mexico City, and these Xolo Squintlers are part of the attractions tourists flock to play with. I feel like these are animals that were basically extinct. I think it's good that they can be here, because it's a peaceful space for this species to be preserved. Eleven purebred Xolos. This is a vital breeding ground for this rare and delicate Aztec dog. They have really sensitive teeth and skin. You have to put sunscreen on them. In the Aztec language, Xolos Quintle means wrinkly dog. It makes sense looking at their hairless skin. But if Xolos Quintles were being named today, they'd probably be labeled miracle dogs. People thought they disappeared in the 19th century until, by chance, a pack was found roaming western Mexico in the 50s. Todo el Xolo. All the cholos we see today in the world come from those 100 animals. The real problem we have is inbreeding. That's been damaging for their pedigree. 
Jorge's a big fan of Cholos Quintles. He's been breeding them for 20 years and exporting them all over the world. A Xolo can fetch anywhere from 1,000 to 8,000 euros. And they're showing up as far from home as Russia, Spain and the US. This dog is headed to Madrid tomorrow. But it's a business that can't grow, because there aren't other dogs I can breed them with. I can't find any. With fewer than 10,000 Xolo squintlers identified all around the world, the breed's future's looking pretty iffy. But while they might already be dying out, we're only just coming to understand them. Raúl Valdez has been studying their story. They originated about 2,000 years ago in the west of Mexico. For about half a century, they stayed in that area. But later, with human migrations, they spread out in different directions. Some headed south through the continent. They're thought to be the ancestors of five other breeds of hairless dogs today. They are primitive animals. Sharing your space with these dogs is like sharing your space with a dog from 5,000, 7,000 or 10,000 years ago. These shy, playful dogs are having a real moment in their native Mexico. But they're still celebrated in traditional medicine to relieve rheumatoid arthritis with their body heat. So, fancy having one of these historical puppies in your life? Also this week, royal watchers on both sides of the pond got the happy news that Britain's Prince Harry was engaged to an American. Actress Meghan Markle is a divorced, older-than-Harry, outspoken, mixed-race feminist who's certain to give a more modern face to the royal family. Here's a look at some of the tweets that popped up on hearing the news. Lauren tweeted, This is me watching Prince Harry and Meghan at the photo call. This one shows the very excited princess to be herself via a scene from her hit TV show, Suits. And from Abdi TV. Prince Harry is really from the streets. He waited to get a Black Friday offer on that ring. Now, just FYI, some of the jewels in that magnificent engagement ring are actually from the collection of Harry's late mother, Princess Diana. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again next time for all the news from north to south. Exclusive. French President Emmanuel Macron appears exclusively on France 24 and RFI. He'll be talking about people smuggling in Libya, the migrant crisis, his commitment to fighting terrorism in the Sahel, and his vision for Africa, its development and ties with the European Union. Don't miss this exclusive interview on France 24 and France24.com.